now recording and I think the screen is now across to uh, Caroline and Petra. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, everybody, wherever you are in the world. I'm Caroline Homer and Petra Tenhoop Bender and I are going to present this next session on State of the World's Midwifery. I hope you can all hear me clearly. I had some difficulties with my technology, ironically following my Papua New Guinea colleagues who managed to get online um, beautifully. It would be the same that in Sydney it was not so simple. Happy International Midwives Day to you all. I hope wherever you are in the world, you are celebrating a beautiful International Midwives Day. Francis Day Sturk started off this morning um, and mentioned the State of the World's Midwifery Report, which Petra and I have been part of the core group in developing this report and it's been an absolute privilege to be involved in this work and to understand the work that midwives are doing throughout the world. It's very humbling and um, quite astonishing what midwives are achieving around the world in 2014 and I've been very pleased to be part of it. At the outset, I'd like to acknowledge the leadership um, of the International Confederation of Midwives, of WHO and of UNFPA, who have uh, co-chaired the work that's led to uh, this State of the World Midwifery since the 2011 report and, um, and, and further from this. But um, those three organisations have been absolutely key to making this happen. Tim, how do I go to the next slide? I'm really sorry. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> there's a little, there's a little button on the bottom, at the bottom of the slide there, a little ah, arrow. I see. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Work well. yeah. So this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are, we're going to cover these things in the presentation, and Petra and I will will to and fro a little bit. I'm going to start the first few slides, and then Petra is going to start. Uh, and do some of the, the rest of the presentation. But we thought it was useful to talk about some of the background. And for many of you, this will be things that you know very much already. Why a State of the World's Midwifery Report is needed, was needed, why another one is being done. Talk a little bit about the 2011 report. Some of you may not be familiar with the 2011 report. It's still available on the UNFPFA website and it's a really useful document. We're then going to talk about how we've approached this 2014 report and talk about some of the challenges and issues that are coming up. The report will be released in June at ICM and at this stage we're going to present you some findings but I would like uh, to have a caveat to those that they are uh, draft findings at the moment. The, the report has not gone to the printer yet and it has not been launched. So these are not official findings at this point in terms of what, what we can release publicly. But we're going to share some of the work that, that has been happening just so that there obviously is something to talk about in this presentation. So in terms of the background to this report, uh, this slide will be very familiar to many of you, I'm hoping, that every woman has the right to skilled, high quality pregnancy and childbirth care. And by that, we also mean care before pregnancy, um, care after the baby's born. So postnatal pre-pregnancy care and postnatal care, obviously critical. And that every woman has the right to care for her and her baby. And that the principles around woman-centred care always, of course, include the baby. We know around the world that every two minutes a woman dies in pregnancy or childbirth and that's a pretty shattering statistic. In the one hour that Petra and I will talk with you this morning, 30 women will die around the world. Most of those causes that they die from are uh, preventable. We know that complications from pregnancy and childbirth are a leading cause of adolescent women worldwide and adolescent women must be a focus of all of our work globally. And of course, the newborn is a critical part of this whole picture and most of those deaths are preventable and most of those deaths occur around the time of birth in those first few hours after birth. 
Uh, we know that more than one third of births around the world take place without a midwife or a skilled health staff in attendance. And I'm very uh, pleased to have heard uh, my colleagues from Papua New Guinea speaking in the last session. And Papua New Guinea is a great example of, of why midwives are so important. And I think you, if you listen to the last session, you'll agree that those midwives who presented were terrific. But they're working in an area that has less than 40% of skilled birth attendants at a birth. And we know midwifery services are key to healthy and safe pregnancy and childbirth. So why do a state of the world's midwifery report? We know that midwives will help avert two thirds of all maternal deaths and half of newborn deaths, providing they're well educated, well equipped, well authorised, well supported and, and authorised to do so. And that competent midwives working with women can support them, not only prevent their deaths, but ensure that they have safe and healthy births and a healthy start to life. Midwives also provide many other services in different parts of the world and author authorised to do different activities depending on the country that you live in. So uh, not only just not only just, but pregnancy and birth care, but also sexual reproductive health, family planning, post-abortion care, malaria, and the important area of mother-to-child tran transmission of HIV. But knowing that midwives can do all these things means we need to know something about the workforce. We need to understand what is the workforce, where is it working, how is it educated, how is it supported, how is it regulated and what are the associations that support midwifery in all of the countries. And so that is why the State of the World's Midwifery Report occurred in 2011 and why it's being repeated in 2014. I'm now going to hand over to Petra who's going to tell you a little bit about SOMI 2011. Thank you very much uh, Caroline. Uh, good morning everybody and indeed happy International Day of the Midwife. Um, in 2011, uh, uh, actually the, the work around 2011 report started earlier. It started at the time that we were realising that there is uh, that midwifery is core to re saving all these mothers' lives. And I, it's not that they didn't know that before or that we weren't aware of that before, but there was a real desire to get a better handle and to better understand what was happening and why where the midwives were, how they were educated. So in 2011, um, the, the, with the new um, energy and impetus of the UN Secretary General's Every Woman, Every Child um, campaign, which focuses on uh, women's and children's health as a global strategy, uh, the, the group, a group of UN organizations, of course, uh, WHO, UNFPA, um, UNICEF, the World Bank, came together and worked, started to organise how to write this report. Obviously, ICM was involved and included, and many other uh, non-governmental organisations, donor groups, uh, and, and interested parties. So we had a very large group of people collaborating on collecting data. Um, and as you see, the, the cover of the, of the 2011 report and uh, Babatunde's uh, headline there that midwifery's deliver and not only babies. Uh, Caroline has already explained quite a lot of, of that, how that works, and we all know that very much from our practices. But to have that visible and, uh, and audible in the international arena really um, made it a large difference. They save lives, they promote good health in societies as a whole, working close to women, as many of us do, and are an essential workforce in an effective healthcare system. So that already that introduction gave us two hooks for the follow-up of, of work on this and, and covering that, those areas in the first report, the essential workforce and the effective healthcare system, both of which are, uh, have a, a large impact on what happens um, and how effective midwives and midwifery can be. So SOMI 2011 really laid the baseline, showed us exactly where midwives are, how they're working, what education they're getting, and how it should be, what regulation exists, how their midwives associations are working. Um, and it came out with a large, uh, uh, with, a, with a kind of a conclusion or a, a, an overview of the areas, the issues, the problems that there are for 
making midwifery stronger, more visible, more available to women and uh, closer to their to where they live and how they live. So there is a there was an identification of a triple gap. There were not enough competencies in many cases uh, in the countries where we assessed midwifery. There was a lack of coverage of midwifery services and women couldn't reach midwifery services. So the, the lack of competencies really was an issue to do with education and regulation and we worked to write up a lot of what the issues were and how they could be solved in 2011. Coverage is really an issue that has to do with, uh, with policies, with um, health system capacity to deploy people very close to women to make them accessible um, and then access is of course something that has to do with how women can reach the services not only geographically but also if they can reach them in time and if they can fund financially um, allow themselves to access their services so there are three layers in which we looked at how uh, what would need to be changed and what would need to be uh, further strengthened in order for all women to have um, a, a, a qualified midwife uh, who's working in an enabled environment next to her at the time that she's pregnant and gives birth. Um, so the education and regulation uh, and association that are were existing at the time and obviously a lot has changed since then we're three years down the road had inf insufficient focus on the quality of care so there were education and, and regulation were uh, were not the primary focus of the strengthening of the midwifery services in, and 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 uh, maternal newborn health services. Over the past many years, the focus has very much been on saving lives in the riskiest time. So looking at emergency obstetric interventions and making those accessible, but paying attention to the 85% of women who usually don't develop a complication was not at the forefront of of the mind of the developing uh, development partners of many countries. So that's where um, the, the, the message around there needs to be more focus on quality of care um, was very strong. And as I said before, the policy coherence didn't work. So there was a focus on um, emergency such a care without further looking at um, the care that all women need and that many women uh, that will help many women not have to access emergency obstetric care. So in this figure you will see what the story is really that um, in the 58 countries that we uh, that were contributing to the 2011 report together they carry 91 percent of the global burden of maternal mortality. They have 80 percent of stillbirths and 82 percent of neonatal mortality. So those are the large numbers. Making a difference in those countries will make a massive dent in those 287,000. But only 50 percent of the world's births um, are attended in those countries, and only 70, with less than 70 percent, 17 percent of the world's midwives, nurses, and physicians. So the report looked at why how we can improve those those numbers and how we can improve um, the, the kind of quality and their, their capacity to deliver the services that are needed and looking at the midwifery workforce in a larger sense of the word includes midwives, nurses and physicians who all work in maternal newborn health services and that actually was the, uh, the point of entry for developing 2013 or 14. We then look at uh, the, the picture here. We made a, a suggestion as to how um, it would be possible to uh, to increase the, the numbers of births. If we projected for 2015, um, how many we would need, given that um, uh, on based on the number of births that a midwife could normally do, you see that um, with the percentage of births that are being um, um, cared for in some of, some of these areas, so Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, Middle East, North Africa, and Latin America and the Caribbean. There are areas where there are, where the projections show that a lot of difference and change can be made if the increase that's happened between 2000 and 2005 continues into 2015. But if you look in Sub-Saharan Africa, where the large number of uh, women are under uh, are, are in difficulty, 
it's really uh, you can you can clearly see that there is uh, a, a need for stronger input for more activity on getting more making more midwives available if we don't make a big dent in the number of midwives available there we're not going to be doing be able to do a lot with regard to reducing maternal mortality in those countries so SOMI 2011 showed that there was uh, uh, came out with a set of bold steps it really asked lots of groups and you see the ones that we've listed here, governments, regulatory bodies, schools, international organisations, to um, push and to find um, a way to make things better. So schools, for example, were asked to review their curriculum and use the ICM education and uh, competencies and standards to inform their curricula. They were asked to work closer with maternity units and communities to allow for practical training so that midwives would go into the field having had, having physically assisted as under supervision and without supervision, but in a safe setting, several births. Um, governments were asked to recognise midwifery as a, as a distinct prof uh, profession so that it could actually um, make sure that there would be pro specific professional regulation for midwives, that there could be support for the setting up and, and, and strengthening of the associations, um, that there would be active data collection, um, which now in 2014 we are still finding is, is not, we, not strong enough, and that there would be a lot of, uh, that it would be clear that midwifery is a core component of the maternal newborn health strategy and a national health plan. Regulatory bodies were asked to put forward a professional title to protect that title of midwifery, to establish the, the standards and the practice competencies that were needed, and to license and relicense midwives for two reasons, to make sure that they are absolutely 100% aware of who's practicing and, and where, but also that they are practicing to the best capacities and the best standards of care. Professional organisations were supported or, or encouraged to promote the standards for training and knowledge updates to give uh, to ensure that there is respect of patients' rights and, and respectful care and to collaborate with other health professional associations to strengthen the input into health plans on behalf of maternal newborn healthcare professional workers. So there's a, a, a kind of a, a multiple approach um, to making this agenda stronger and specifically to putting it towards implementation in the country. And then finally, the international organisations and the global partnerships and civil society were really asked to promote the recognition of midwifery to provide financial and in-kind support, in support to build capacity of associations, to monitor and measure quality and results and make strategic intelligence available. So not just numbers, but also 